Good morning. I thought it would be good to start this series of local history talks with how I got involved and interested in, in local history. Uh, it was really by accident, and it, but it was very specific. It started in 1970. At that time, I was working on adventure playgrounds in London, and I'd come back up home to Nottingham, and I, I paused on Wheelergate just outside Sisson and Parker's bookshop. You may remember the shop, lovely old shop with a fantastic wooden staircase that went up to the second floor and always lovely staff, very, very helpful. And in the front window, there was a display, a display of, of books by an author called Geoffrey Trees. And the book was called Nottingham a Biography. Geoffrey Trees turned out to be a very distinguished author and he'd written novels and children's stories and he, this was a, a one-off and I thought well th th this is unusual but I like the front cover and it was a picture of Robin Hood, the statue uh, outside the castle, it was very very misty looking and it, it drew me in to look at the book and went inside and read a few pages and I thought wow this this person can write and it was really really well written the book and uh, there was a quote that caught my eye and it was in his personal introduction in chapter one and the quote was everyone in any case has his personal view of the city what brings people to nottingham for some it's a test match at trent bridge a cup tie against forest or colic races for others a theatrical occasion at the playhouse or a conference at the university Others again come to choose rose bushes, to see an exhibition at the castle, film a Lawrence story, follow up research on Byron, and have fun at Goose Fair, or even, if they come from America, look for visible reminders of Robin Hood. And then he goes on to more detailed chapters. He looks at Anglo-Saxon and Danish Nottingham, the arrival of the Normans, talks about the Tudor period, he goes on to Georgian grace, then progress and philanthropy, he talks about the framework knitters, hosiery, development of the lace market, then he comes on to more modern times and he looks at the 20th century, but what I found really interesting was his chapter on today and tomorrow because there he looks at the influence of new institutions organizations and new arrivals to to nottingham from the 1950s and he talks about the impact on nottingham as a, a city uh, and one thing that captures his, his attention is radio nottingham so i thought it'd be good to see what he says about radio nottingham and he says that he likes its pleasant jingly call sign uh, and he talks about the fact that it served a small area, uh, the, the regional and local influence. It's too early to judge the experiment. Such stations have to operate on a shoestring, but there are manifest possibilities in regular programmes such as what are they up to now, devoted to the shortcomings of officialdom and other grievances, heartening evidence that the citizens have not lost their traditional love of protest. No less encouraging is the response given to talks talking about personal reminiscence of the town. And this is a series called, if I remember right, I think it was. And then he talks about a series on local history with excellent illustrated accompanying booklets, which indicate that people in the street can take an interest in their streets, especially if they're old. Radio stations like these serve a single community and they can do a lot to bind that community together. So he recognised the value of the media and particularly Radio Nottingham. Then he talks about the appearance of massive recent buildings and he talks about the high-rise developments at Bloon Woods and Heysen Green and, and elsewhere. He looks at the new writers, people like Alan Silito, local writers and their characters like Arthur Seaton and what he got up to uh, in Nottingham. Uh, then the Trent Bridge, the Bottlenecks and Clifton and Bridge. And he, he has this idea, this vision of new urban motorways and multi-level junctions swirling and convoluting. And also he puts up this proposal that there could be pedestrian precincts in Nottingham so that people can get around uh, better. And he says that the future could be a not unpleasant vision. And he says it's certainly going to be a big city but can it be a great one? I believe that with an effort, it can be. 
But it's the people, not I, who need to believe and to act on their belief. So he saw many challenges for Nottingham for the, the future. And I think his vision had much going for it. He, he anticipated a lot of future developments like, like motorways and new cultures that were, were going to uh, evolve. And he appreciated that it was the people that counted the community itself. So I thought this was a really insightful book and so well written. Uh, and I've kept it all these years. It's in front of me now. It was showing a lot of signs of wear and tear, but I had it conserved by a local conservator who did a, a great job on it. And I really do appreciate that because it has pride of place on my bookshelf with lots of other local books. And it's been great to share my pleasure in reading that book today. Thank you.